Once again, my name is Dave Anderson. When I uh, began to quote unquote wake up and I was starting to hit the internet, um, it, it was, uh, as I described before, a very bare knuckle environment. And um, there was a lot of hostility and a lot of anger and a lot of rage. Um, and it, it, was, it was crazy waking up. One of the things that came up quite often was this discussion about post-traumatic stress syndrome. And uh, I had a problem with that. I had a, a problem with that. I had this, this notion that um, post-traumatic stress disorder was um, reserved for the military. It was um, reserved for a rape victim. It was reserved for special cases of uh, people that uh, had been traumatized. Yeah, I went through a lot of shit, but, you know, I, I, I could never really say that I had post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, as time went on, it became abundantly clear that I was wrong. I, I was riddled with post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, but it, it was an unveiling. It, it was uh, something that I didn't just wake up one day and, huh, hey, you know, I've got post-traumatic stress disorder. It was slowly, ever so slowly, that uh, it just became glaringly obvious. Um, you know, and I began to do an incredible amount of research. I mean, just an enormous amount of research, anything that I could read, anything I could find, any search argument that I could put into Google or anything else I was looking for, I was reading it. And, uh, everything I read seemed to support the notion that I had post-traumatic stress disorder. And, uh, and I do. I do have post-traumatic stress disorder. I, I have complex post-traumatic stress disorder. The question really gets confusing then. Well, what is PTSD and what is CPTSD? Post-traumatic stress disorder, generally speaking, talks about a, um, a singular event. An automobile accident. Uh, a gunshot, falling off a horse, um, a rape, um, and, and I don't mean to diminish, diminish anybody's suffering, not at all, but I'm doing, saying this to illustrate the difference. Complex PTSD it, it, it is different in the sense that it lapses over a period of time. The trauma uh, continues on and on and on. Um, remember a few years ago, the, the, the three women in, in Ohio that had been locked up in that man's house for years and years and years. See, that was not just a rape. That was raping and raping and raping and raping until the woman was actually impregnated. That's very complex. You know, that's where you just can't come up to somebody and, hey, don't you want to be the happy fellow you were last week? Well, see, you can remember last week. Easy enough to remember last week. But when it goes into years and years and years, it's very difficult to remember what that happy-go-lucky fellow was last week. Um, and another weird thing that seems to happen with straight survivors is um, we don't present with symptoms right away. You know, perhaps because we're younger and we're still having a lot of fight in this and, you know, screw the system, fuck the man, and uh, I'm going to show them. I'm going to, you know, be different. 
we get married and we have kids and we have jobs and uh, we go through all of our stuff. And then at some point what happens is it begins to unravel. Out of nowhere, nightmares start to come in. What are bad nightmares turn into night terrors. And there's a significant difference. More about that another day. Yesterday we talked about how basically the uh, monotony, the dread, the fear, the abuse in these warehouses, um, in my case, went on for three years. You know, and, uh, I did some rough math. I'm not good at that, but I did some rough math. And I figured 12 hours a day, well, I wasn't there 12 hours a day for three years, but, you know, for a good portion of that, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I narrowed it down to three years, and somehow I ended up with roughly 10,000 hours of abuse that I was subjected to, or I took part in. That's 10,000 hours of being fucked up and doing some fucked up shit. We already talked about yesterday how the, uh, the brain actually atrophies at this point. You know, that that's well and good. It atrophies. Well, it's not well and good, but I mean, all right, we can understand that, you know, a young mind that has yet to split into its own hemispheres uh, can be affected. When they say atrophy, what does? Well, when PTSD, and, and, and I don't pretend to be a doctor, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a counselor, I'm not licensed, I'm not educated. So don't take my word on it. Ask yourself. But uh, I had to ask myself, what areas you know, of the brain are affected by the PTSD? What, what atrophy? What became necrotic? What died? Well, and, you know, as it turns out, the uh, areas that are uh, kind of messed up by the brain are what they call the amygdala, the hippocampus, and the uh, prefrontal cortex. And three main areas of the brain, very important parts of the brain. Uh, the amygdala is, uh, you know, a component of the limbic system, and, uh, and it's thought to, uh, you know, have a lot of strengths and a lot of uh, part in, you know, in our, in our emotional and behavioral regulations. Um, and it uh, has a lot to do with how we deal with fear. Um, I, I think one of the greatest examples is, is you see Mikey, one of my cats. One of my cats will be walk, walking across the room and I'll just Ever so slightly move my foot, and that cat will jump three feet. That cat will land, and he'll get up and walk away. It's cool, no problem. Scare me like that. You come up and you startle me like that. I'm not going to land on my feet and be okay and just walk away. I'm going to be fucked up for a couple hours, if not days. So, the amygdala... And that fear response um, is pretty, pretty apparent in myself. Uh, now, the uh, hippocampus, um, this is pretty much the brain network and the neural pathways. Uh, and it has to do with, uh, you know, a lot of social and a lot of, uh, you know, social cues, social cognition or whatever. Um, and a lot of uh, the emotional processing that takes place in the brain. Um, then the uh, prefrontal cortex, that's located right up here. Right here. Okay. And what this does is uh, it, it also, you know, has a lot to do with the uh, 
thinking skills, cognitive skills, you know, whatever, uh, emotional expression, uh, problem solving, memory, or language, uh, judgment, sexual behaviors, and it's basically the control center for our personality and, and to allow us to be able to communicate. Um, and you take these three things, you know, the, uh, the uh, amygdala, the hippocampus, and the prefrontal cortex, and, and as I've laid out, these are pretty serious parts of the brain to go necrotic. We're damaged. We've been hit by a bag of rocks. This is a huge, another huge, huge subject as it pertains to straight survivors. I won't pretend to go into it all now. It's just too all encompassing to put into one video and I don't want to bore you to death. Um, but we'll be breaking it down a little bit further as we go along. I appreciate you listening. Absolutely. I appreciate you listening.